This video describes my preferred approach to ultrasound guided subclavian vein cannulation. But in it, I also hope to share with you my journey of self learning and how I personally arrived at this technique. As those of you who've seen my video on landmark guided subclavian vein cannulation may know, I wasn't initially trained to use ultrasound, and because I became very comfortable with my landmark guided technique, I never saw the need to dedicate myself to learning how to use ultrasound guidance. But another reason was that the few times I did try to use ultrasound, I found it more difficult. I found it took more time and it just didn't feel good. But this is the normal process of learning any new technique. You have to accept that for a while, you won't be as slick as you were with your usual technique and failures are gonna be common. So in 2021, during a secondment to ICU to help with the COVID surge, I decided I would devote myself to learning how to use ultrasound, not just for myself, but also so that I could teach others because it was becoming clearer to me that very few learners would have access to someone who was willing to supervise and guide and undertake the repetitions that were required to master the landmark guided approach. My personal approach to learning anything new is outlined here. I always start my learning process by gathering as much information as I can. And the most valuable resources I found for ultrasound guided subclavian cannulation are listed in the description of this video. And I recommend reviewing them in addition to watching the video. And this is not because they necessarily teach the same technique I describe here, but rather their value lies in hearing the opinion of others, which helps to deepen understanding with regard to all the different approaches, as well as the core principles that you should take into account as you repeat and refine your own approach to the technique. With every repetition of the procedure, I use the principles of deliberate practice, which means being very observant of every step and its outcome, and taking time at the end to reflect on what went well and not so well, as well as why. And I then revisit my chosen learning resources to see if I missed anything. And then I refine my process as needed, and at the next attempt, I put any changes to the test, repeating the cycle. With regard to ultrasound guided subclavian cannulation, there are two basic approaches you could use. One, a short axis view of the vein and an out of plane needle insertion. Or two, a long axis view of the vein with an in plane needle insertion. Different resources recommend one over the other. In almost all of my other ultrasound guided vascular access techniques, I use and promote a short axis out of plane approach as the first line mainly because it helps to ensure that the needle is precisely centered on the vessel. The long axis in-plane approach requires aligning three things, needle, beam, and target, which is usually difficult. However, this is most critical for smaller vessels as in arterial or peripheral venous cannulation. It's much easier for a large vessel like the subclavian vein, where there is more margin for error when trying to align the vessel, beam, and needle in the long axis in-plane approach. Personally, I have chosen not to use the short axis out of plane approach for ultrasound guided subclavian vein cannulation. The depth of the axillary or subclavian vein makes it tricky to judge the appropriate angle of needle insertion. Millington and al. in their article point out the need to identify an entry point and a landing point, and that different authorities have different views on the optimal needle insertion angle, thus highlighting this difficulty. It's also harder to continually track the out of plane needle tip for a subclavian vein insertion because of the depth and distance of insertion. But most importantly, the consequence of excessively deep insertion, namely pleuropuncture and pneumothorax, is potentially catastrophic. Unlike the landmark guided technique, where I can keep the needle horizontal throughout the insertion process, in the ultrasound guided technique, we have to angle the needle downwards to reach the vein which lies deep under the pec major and minor muscles. So the risk of pleuropuncture is very real if we fail to localize the needle tip. And I have personally found the short axis out of plane approach to be challenging to perform safely and successfully. So instead I turn to the long axis in plane technique, which allows me to see and adjust my needle trajectory and track my tip better. But the footprint of most linear transducers is quite large and when this is placed in the infraclavicular region, it forces us to target the vein quite laterally, turning this in effect into an axillary vein cannulation. The skin insertion point is also much more lateral, close to the axilla and shoulder joint. Now, targeting the axillary vein in this lateral location 
creates two main issues. First, that it lies a lot deeper, under the pec muscles, compared to the true subclavian vein, which is just under the clavicle. Second, the curving course of the vein may tend to make the guide wire head up into the jugular vein rather than turn down into the superior vena cava. Some practitioners advocate using probes with smaller footprints, such as a microconvex probe. But these probes are not widely available to most of us, so I don't consider it a viable solution. I have instead made a few modifications to the long axis in-plane approach using a standard linear array probe with the primary goal of skin insertion and vein puncture closer to the clavicle. The most important principle is that I want to pierce the vein as close to the clavicle as possible, as here the vein is more superficial and also straighter. This makes it more similar to the landmark guided insertion trajectory, which I've used with consistent success. I found that the key is to place the probe such that half of it is overlying the clavicle, realizing that we only need to see part of the vein on our screen, the part that we're actually trying to pierce. It doesn't matter that half of the screen is the bony dropout of the clavicle. With this view, this allows us to then insert the needle at the lateral edge of our probe and end up much closer to the clavicle than we would otherwise be. I will now describe all the steps that I go through in performing long axis in-plane ultrasound guided subclavian vein cannulation. In addition to my own material, I have utilized multiple screen captures from these two excellent videos produced by the Swedish Internet Anesthesi Group, and I cannot recommend them highly enough as additional learning material. Whenever possible, like the Swedes, I begin by performing a non-sterile pre-scan of the subclavian vein anatomy to ensure that I can obtain a good view of the vein and its relationship to the subclavian artery, that the vein itself is well filled and patent without thrombosis or other anomalies. I usually start by placing the probe in a parasagittal orientation to get a transverse short axis view of the artery and vein, and then I rotate my probe carefully and slowly, keeping the vein in view to get the long axis view. I also use this time to rehearse the small sliding and tilting probe motions necessary to obtain and maintain a good view of the vein. As with all ultrasound imaging, it helps to know your anatomy. Use the clavicle as your landmark, and remember that the vein takes a curving course towards the clavicle, so the probe will not be parallel to the clavicle when the beam is parallel to the vein. It's also helpful to know that the artery lies cranial to the vein, and so if the probe is tilted to direct the beam cranially, both vessels can be seen at the same time. I don't recommend this view though when targeting the vein for puncture, for fairly obvious reasons. Trace the axillary or subclavian vein along its course to visualize its medial portion where it dives under the clavicle and has a relatively superficial and straight course. As I've mentioned, I have the medial end of the probe resting on the clavicle and the acoustic shadow of the clavicle occupying about a third of the image. Note that you will often see the cephalic vein joining the subclavian vein at this location close to the clavicle. Prepare all of your equipment, position, prep and drape the patient as described in my other video on ultrasound guided internal jugular vein cannulation. I generally leave the patient's head and neck in a neutral position and I place them in a head down position to optimize vein filling and distension. I usually start with a long steel needle and not the cannula over needle, for reasons that I will explain shortly. If performing this in an awake patient and infiltrating the skin with local anesthetic for comfort, use a sufficiently long needle that can act as a finder needle to fine tune your needle beam alignment and rehearse your trajectory towards the vein. Insert the introducer needle towards the vein. Note that the force needed to pierce the skin can lead to temporary loss of probe skin contact. So focus on puncturing the skin under direct vision before turning your attention to the ultrasound screen. Now most current vascular access needles are not very echogenic, so use gentle probing and tilting motions of the needle to generate tissue motion at the tip, which helps to localize its position. You should be able to see the vein wall being tented by the needle tip prior to actual puncture. An entry will then be confirmed by aspiration of blood.
If you do not initially have good needle beam alignment, which again is quite a common occurrence, you can slide your probe lateral or medial to find the needle. But at that point, you will lose the view of your target, the vein. Having said that, you will now know whether your needle is lateral or medial to the vein. Slide the probe back to find the vein, and then shift the needle trajectory in the appropriate lateral or medial direction to bring it in line with the beam. Note that the mobility present in actual patient skin versus in the simulator will usually allow you to make a parallel shift of the needle, as shown here in this clip from the interanesthesia group. This is much better than angling the needle to enter the vein from one side, which increases the risk of through and through puncture or difficulty threading the wire. These captured images illustrate the parallel shift process in a little more detail. Note too that if the probe is slightly angled to visualize the vein as it is here, the skin insertion site should be offset from the center of the probe to compensate for the change in beam position at the actual depth of the vein. A useful tip is to place your index finger along the shaft to apply lateral pressure and shift it from side to side, but also to stop the shaft from bending which will happen if you just manipulate it at the hub. And the supplied cannula over needle in most sets is even more flexible, and thus needs even greater care with handling during insertion through the tough cutaneous and subcutaneous tissues to avoid bending. And you've probably gathered by now that I basically don't recommend using the cannula as your introducer needle. In my experience, it's just not rigid enough, and it's also poorly visible on ultrasound, as you can see here. I recommend using the steel needle instead. However, the cannula can be useful to secure the access that you've obtained in the vein, particularly if you're having trouble with advancing the guide wire and need to spend time fiddling with it. Josh Farkas from Palm Crit has a great tip. Use the steel needle to puncture the vein, but then withdraw the needle over the wire and exchange it for the cannula. With the cannula in place, you can now fiddle with the head and arm position without worrying about keeping the steel needle tip within the lumen of the vein, which can be a difficult thing to do, particularly if the vein is not well filled. Successful passage of the guide wire into the superior vena cava and right side of the heart is usually confirmed by the elicitation of PVCs. And from this point on, proceed with the remaining steps of the procedure which are identical to the landmark guided subclavian cannulation technique and covered in more detail in my video that describes this approach.